Prometrium, progesterone pills, oral progesterone, well, no matter what you call it, progesterone can eliminate some of the most serious menopause symptoms and reduce long-term health risks at the same time. Progesterone, especially in an oral capsule form, is essential for women after menopause. I'm Steve Goldring. I help both patients and healthcare providers with easy to understand patient education resources through my simplehormones.com website. Those are especially about hormone optimization. If you're a hormone optimization provider, I'd love to get your information on my hormone provider database so I can help you find new patients. Well, as I started putting together this video, I got a call maybe two hours ago, struggling with what she called bioidentical hormone creams. She's had some problems with depression and anxiety, and she doesn't feel like the bioidentical hormones are really helping her all that much. In this video, I'll go over six different things about progesterone, and maybe you might need to know them too, especially if you're a woman getting into menopause. So what is progesterone in the first place? Progesterone is one of the two major hormones produced in the ovaries before menopause, along with estradiol. Progesterone is mostly made by the corpus luteum. That's kind of a leftover piece of tissue inside the ovary after ovulation. That happens every single month. Progesterone is designed to encourage the implantation of a fertilized egg in the uterus. Progesterone levels go way up toward the end of a woman's monthly cycle. Symptoms of low progesterone levels. Low progesterone levels are responsible for a huge number of life-changing symptoms. Especially in women of childbearing age, let's say between 15 and 45 years old. Also in women during the perimenopause period, that's about four to six years before they go into menopause. And in women who are no longer having their periods, they've officially gone into menopause or they're called postmenopausal. Many women experience severe depression or anxiety that's kind of tied in with their menstrual cycles. Low progesterone levels are a big reason why women struggle with premenstrual syndrome, irritability, anxiety, and depression right before they have their periods. A lot of that's caused by low progesterone levels right before the period starts. I just posted a video last week about postpartum depression and progesterone. Within about Four hours after having a baby, a mom's progesterone level basically drops like a rock. Progesterone levels are extremely high during pregnancy, and the main purpose of that is to help maintain a healthy pregnancy. But after the baby's born, that progesterone doesn't need to be that high, except for the fact that losing it all of a sudden can cause women to plunge into severe depression. Take a look at that postpartum depression video to learn more about that topic. The same exact symptoms of low progesterone levels happen in menopausal women. Because their progesterone levels are so low, naturally, they also can experience severe depression and anxiety. I've had some women tell me that they really wanted to take their own lives. Some said they were paralyzed by anxiety so severe that they couldn't even open the front door and walk outside to pick up the mail. These stories literally brought me to tears sometimes. They were just so heartbreaking. The other major problem that low progesterone levels cause is insomnia. I can't tell you how many women I've talked to who said they get maybe three or four hours of sleep every single night for months on end. Well, I struggle with sleep problems myself, but I can't imagine what it's like to sleep that little for that long. Because of losing so much sleep as a result of low progesterone levels, women get what's called the fog of menopause. It's kind of a brain fog that makes you forget where you put your keys, where you parked your car, why you even drove here in the first place, and oh yeah, what was that kid's name I was supposed to pick up? My daughter. Brain fog is a huge problem in menopause. Women feel like they're going crazy or they're getting Alzheimer's and they simply cannot think straight. It's totally because they haven't gotten enough sleep every single night for months or even years, it all goes back to their low progesterone levels that come with menopause. Health risks of low progesterone levels. Low progesterone levels are implicated in some serious long-term health risks. A particular type of cancer called endometrial cancer, basically a cancer of the lining of the uterus, is much higher who don't, in women who don't get enough progesterone especially if those women are taking some form of estrogen to help with, say, hot flashes or other menopause symptoms. That's why progesterone is so important for women to take along with estradiol for menopause symptoms. 
Well, there was a huge study in France in the early 2000s that looked at hundreds of thousands of women in menopause. That study showed that women taking oral progesterone, the exact same progesterone as the one made by their bodies before they went into menopause, those women had less breast cancer than women taking no hormones at all. That's not an absolutely conclusive proof, but it does point in the direction that just right progesterone levels are protective against breast cancer. Progesterone may also help reduce other serious long-term health risks like osteoporosis and dementia, especially when progesterone is given along with estradiol as hormone replacement after menopause. There's really no substitute for progesterone. There are a lot of drugs and hormones that are so-called progestins. While that name progestin sounds pretty similar to progesterone, they're not the same. Here's an example. In the early 2000s, there was a giant study of tens of thousands of women in menopause. It was called the Women's Health Initiative. It looked at women getting estrogens along with a particular progestin called medroxyprogesterone. That name also sounds like progesterone, even though medroxyprogesterone is just tweaked a tiny little bit. It behaves completely differently than actual progesterone does. The Women's Health Initiative showed that medroxyprogesterone increased breast cancer risk, even though estrogen alone didn't. But we know that progesterone actually decreases breast cancer risk from that other study that I talked about. Medroxyprogesterone also doesn't do anything to help women with depression, anxiety, or insomnia. It does help prevent endometrial cancer, which is good, but it's simply not as good as progesterone in a whole lot of other ways. Going natural, that's kind of a common approach and it's quite understandable. There's nothing wrong with taking herbs or supplements to maybe relieve hot flashes or even help you with insomnia. You need to remember one thing. You have all these symptoms as a direct result of the root problem. The root problem is not that you don't have enough black cohosh or that you need more herbs or more supplements. The root problem is the loss of your hormones. In this case, it's the fact that your progesterone levels are completely in the toilet. And you'll never really solve all those problems associated with low progesterone levels until you replace that lost progesterone with actual, you guessed it, progesterone. Real progesterone comes in various forms, but the best are what are called oral micronized progesterone capsules. They can be found in a compounding pharmacy, or there's also Prometrium, which is a commercially available, commercially manufactured drug. There's a generic form of Prometrium. Both Prometrium and the generic progesterone capsules are made using a peanut oil, which can be a problem for some with allergies. The best way to take progesterone is an oral capsule. In 1996, a family practice doctor named Dr. John Lee published a book called What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Menopause, the breakthrough book on natural progesterone. Dr. Lee promoted progesterone cream as the best treatment for menopause symptoms. That book and Dr. Lee's other work still has a big influence on menopausal women and even on doctors 18 years after he died. But there are a couple of reasons why progesterone creams are not the best way to take this crucial hormone, in my informed opinion. The bioidentical cream that you've been taking, even if it does contain progesterone, might not be the best dosage form to really help you with your symptoms. Progesterone taken orally is metabolized or broken down by the liver in something called a first pass effect. Your liver has the ability to change that hormone into something slightly different so that it can be peed out or pooped out and that way the, the body doesn't build up too high of progesterone levels. Well, when the liver does its thing on progesterone, one of the chemicals that comes from progesterone metabolism is called allopregnanolone. Allopregnanolone is the metabolite of progesterone that A, helps you sleep, and B, helps prevent depression and anxiety. When you take progesterone in a transdermal cream, it doesn't get metabolized into allopregnanolone, at least not quite as much. Because of that, progesterone creams are not anywhere near as effective in preventing depression, anxiety, or insomnia. The only way to solve these problems is with progesterone in an oral capsule. You can use Prometrium or oral micronized progesterone. Progesterone in a cream form also doesn't seem to be very effective at reducing the risk of endometrial cancer. It's very difficult to get progesterone levels high enough with a transdermal progesterone cream so that the endometrium is protected. 
There are quite a few studies using vaginal progesterone in creams or suppositories for preventing endometrial cancer, and it does work for that, but it's much less of an appealing way to take progesterone for most women. And it's not really clear whether vaginal progesterone will actually help with depression, with anxiety, or insomnia, but it seems like it might be unlikely. Progesterone is essential whether you've had a uterus or not. There's kind of a way of thinking that many doctors have that women who've had a complete hysterectomy don't need progesterone. This thinking is completely false. The idea that women without a uterus don't need progesterone might be based on the Women's Health Initiative, where women were given estrogen along with medroxyprogesterone, and they had a slightly elevated risk for breast cancer. But that doesn't take into account the fact that progesterone is not the same as medroxyprogesterone like we've already talked about, and that progesterone may actually prevent breast cancer. Women in menopause can take estrogens to reduce hot flashes and mood swings. It helps them control their weight better and they feel less irritable. But if they don't get progesterone, they still won't be able to sleep. They'll still suffer from depression and they may still be paralyzed with anxiety. My friend is doing okay with hot flashes and mood swings, but she was really struggling with not being able to sleep at all. She was on medroxyprogesterone. I recommended that she ask her doc to switch her to oral progesterone. She ended up with progesterone oil-filled capsules, and it made all the difference for her, at least in her sleep. It simply makes no sense at all to withhold progesterone from women in menopause. It has a strong safety profile and it's relatively low side effects. Why not give it to women with no major risk factors? I hope that helps you. I also hope that one of those two doctors that I recommended for you might be a good fit I know both of them personally, and they both have great experience and training and expertise in helping women just like you through menopause. If you're a woman like my friend looking for some help with your menopause symptoms, click the link on this video to see if there's a qualified, experienced hormone optimization specialist near you. I can't promise that I'll connect you with somebody, but I do know a lot of hormone specialists all over the US and even in some other countries. I'll give it my best shot. If you're a hormone optimization provider, I'd love to get you on my database. Click the link that says join the provider database and I'll get you instructions on how to do that. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons to get notified whenever I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.